Hi, this is Jimmy from The Productive Engineer. Have you ever been working in Notion and wondered, how do I manipulate my tables so I can have uh, copies of those tables in various parts of Notion with customized views? Well, the way you do that is linked databases. And today that's what we're gonna be covering. So stay tuned. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, my channel is all about helping you become more productive using the productivity apps you use every day. If you like this video, please click the like button as it really helps me out. If you want to see more of my videos, please click the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos, please click the little bell icon. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is have a master database from which we're going to create our linked databases from. This is my master database for the purposes of this tutorial. I have five columns, um, some pre-populated data, and I'm going to make a couple of different linked databases off of this. So how do I make a new linked database? Well, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to create a new page. And the way I'm going to do that is by typing the slash and then page and then enter. And it gives me a new page. And we'll call this um, Charlie. Charlie's tests. Um, basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a linked database and then I'm going to create a filter that sorts only and shows only Charlie's data uh, tests that are, um, you know, that are assigned to him. So the way you create a linked database is by typing the slash key and create, and then you'll see create linked database comes up as an option right here. Let's select that. And then it's going to ask me for my database. Now, there's a couple of ways to pull it up. One is to scroll and see if you see it. Or if you have a lot of databases, you can just type in um, what you want, which I believe is called master database. So I typed in master, and there it is. And as you can see, a what looks like a copy of my original database. Uh, shows up. However, it's a slightly different here. If you look over here, you'll see a little arrow and then the name of the um, my original database. What this says is that this is a linked database to this master database. So th basically this all this data is derived from this table here. So as you can see, I have all the data that I have. If I click back to my master database, it's the exact same data. Um, so if I go back to Charlie's tasks, um, and you can rearrange these so by just clicking and then dragging a column. So this is the column I'm going to ultimately sort on, uh, filter, because I only want the entries for Charlie. So what I'm going to do is come up here to this ellipses. I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to come down here to filter. Click filter. It gives you a couple of examples of types of filters you can build. And then down here's the button where you add a filter. So just click this add a filter button. And it's going to give me a uh, basically a, a criteria, filter criteria, if I can learn how to speak, filter criteria for determining what I'm filtering. So the first thing I want to do, this is going to refer to the column. So I click on this and I go to owner. I want to filter for every day that has Charlie. And I'm going to click here. And this is context aware. So it knows that owner is a multi select um, property type. So as a result, it knows to list all the potential property types here. Now, if I had a ton of them um, that wouldn't all appear, I can just type in my, start typing it. And as you can see, it'll auto populate only the ones that match what I'm typing. In this case, Charlie, because I typed CH. So I will click that, come, come out here, and I can see now that I have all the items that of which Charlie is assigned. Pretty cool, right? So let's get a little more fancy. So let's create a new one. Come down here. Let's do another, let's do a heading. Give this a heading, and let's call this Veruca 
and violet not you know tasks that are not completed here we're actually going to filter on two columns so I'm going to create another link database doing the exact same way we did before typing create bringing up the link database option and clicking it we'll come here again we'll type master because we're linking to the same database we're not going to link to Charlie's um, link database but click the linking directly to the master table and this time it, again, it draws the full table. Again, we're going to click the ellipses. We're going to add a filter. Click the add filter button here, as you can see. And we'll say task, change it to owner, contains Veruca. We're going to hit add a filter here and as you can see it creates a second part of it and this is the, con the joining conditional um, and then you can even make it an and or or so we want all the tasks that have either Veruca, Veruca actually we want ones that are Veruca and Violet owner contains Violet and so now we've so far filtered for or filtered things that have Veruca and Violet. And we want the current status to not be complete. So it does not contain completed. And as you can see, it sorts down to the one tasks that both of them are assigned to that is not complete so pretty cool the idea is that you can by using filters you can really sort of get granular on your views and one of the cool things about these views is if I update the master table so if I'm in here in the master table I add a new entry and let's say um, make a YouTube video <laughs> And I assign it to Veruca. What do I spell Veruca? And Violet. And I, and I come over here and I say, you know, test just for some notes. I assign it to the 27th. And I come over here and I just say, you know, not start it right I've added a new entry now when I come down here you can see that that entry is now automatically updated my linked view is automatically updated based upon what I did in the master table and I can do the same thing over here if I go back and I add something else for Charlie I can say um, tell grandpa Joe not to be so lazy I mean, he was in bed for all those years for no good reason. And I decided to Charlie. Another test. And I'll put this one in progress. And I go back to Charlie. Tell Ch Grandpa not to be so lazy shows up. Um, and the other thing is, so to send this one takes further, I go back to the master database. And let's say I say make a YouTube video instead of, and I complete that. I, t I can take that out, mark it complete. If I go back, notice it's no longer in this view. And the reason why is because my filter is not just filtering on Violet and Veruca, but it's also filtering on the status. And the minute the status becomes complete, because again, if we look at our filter, <clears throat> excuse me, I had to cough there for a second. If you look at the filter, you'll actually see it does not contain completed. So as a result, when I changed it to completed, um, it eliminated, it became, it became, it became um, it no longer matched the criteria necessary for the filter and therefore it was excluded. So 
once you get the hang of linked databases and filters, you can really create powerful databases that uh, and views of those databases um, that are really kind of cool and can really aid your workflow. The best, the best reason to use this type of linked database, master database um, workflow is that you can have one central database that houses all the information you want. And you can um, actually just filter out only the data you want for certain views. So if you have like one master task list that contains tasks for your work, your side projects, and your family life, um, you could have that in one database, but you could have individual views based upon, you know, home life, side hustle and main job as an example, or whatever projects you're working on or whatever criteria or who you're working with or you know, the current statuses. You can make a ton of linked views of the same database. And it's basically giving you a million different ways to look at the same data. And that really is powerful once you get the hang of it. As a matter of fact, one of the things you can do, um, you can actually come and actually hide so if I wanted to hide the due date, the due date didn't matter for this view. I just wanted to see everything that's you know not completed. I can actually hide this column and, and maybe hide the this, this column because I don't care about the comments. And I can just have a view that just has the, the task, the status, and the owners because that's all maybe I want to see for this. Um, so it really gets powerful in terms of what you can do, you know, and this is one really the most powerful pieces. And I keep saying powerful. <laughs> Uh, but it really is one of the key parts of Notion uh, that I, really makes it sticky for me in terms of being a part of my workflow. Well, I hope this video was really helpful for you. Again, if you like this video, please click that like button because it really does help me out. Uh, if you want to see more videos from me, please click that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I release a new video, please click that bell button. Thank you.